Well, we definitely had wind gusts uh, in the over 50 miles an hour and sustained winds in the 20s most of the day. The trees and stuff have really been whipping around around here, but the container shelter is holding up great. Uh, our carport, uh, as you'll see in a minute here, not so much, but uh, it's been absolutely crazy amount of wind and just sustained for so long. This one's holding up to the winds. That one did not. <laughs> Shit. Uh, starting to get the grade built up in here like it's supposed to be. So we're pipes are in. All right, so I reviewed the security camera footage here at like 6.30 in the morning. If you look behind the tractor here, you'll kind of see uh, over the canopy of the tractor. That's where that little carport's at. Uh, and you're gonna see a big gust of wind come and just carry that thing away. Um, and that's all she wrote. That thing was anchored down with brake drums that went flying. Uh, those brake drums are, I don't know, uh, over hundred pounds a piece. <laughs> so they weren't very good anchors, but that thing got all torn up again. Crazy. Just notice that. We haven't touched it. This is that liner that had the water, the rusty piston where the water was going directly into it. And you can see a lot of scoring and marks and stuff in it. We're gonna do a main bearing uh, and rod bearing and crankshaft inspection here, as well as pull the one cylinder kit out and take a look at it and the O-rings and the condition of the water jacket uh, up inside the block. that's running that's still coming out of that pressure relief valve? It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want uh, all these in a separate tray? Okay, so I got a liner pool, puller tool in there that goes straight across, mm -hmm. sticks out on those liner points, and then we can use the piston to drive up the liner out. So as Jonathan rotates the engine over, that should push that liner up out of there. Pretty sure. I don't have a ratchet on in there. Sorry. Okay, it's gonna get really hard now as you're driving the liner up. Some more leverage. <laughs> yeah, they got a three foot bar you're using, right? <laughs> Hang on a second. Let me get over here in case you actually get it to move. <laughs> okay. Mm. You want to slide a longer bar on it? I think you're three quarter one with that on there. Okay, it's going for more leverage here. So we got this extendable ratchet from Easy Red. It's got a collar on it and then it gets really long. It's three quarter inch drive. Hopefully this will give them the leverage to be able to pop that liner out of there. So let me go around the other side. Yeah, once it pops out. And go really slow. Stop. Come over here and see if you can grab that liner. Can you grab it from there and try and just lift it straight out? Piston, oh, good. The piston should come with it. all that. This one should be pretty good.
Uh, throw the bolts back on there for me. That's a lot of crap in the airbox. That's why it was so hard to drive out of there. The crankshaft has a film on it. Can you try and wipe it one more time on the side just so I can see it kind of polish it off? I don't see any big scratches though or anything. But it definitely has like a film from the coolant and the oil. But, yeah, it looks pretty decent from here. Let's take a look at the raw, uh, the main bearing is how it does. That's a raw journal. There's not a lot of stop leak residue in here. I know a lot of people thought this is wet liners. Once the liner's out, and I can really look inside the engine block here for the cooling system part. So we're definitely going to do everything we can to clean everything up real good. I, not, I got some crap in there from the air box that scraped off that's in there. But we'll get it all cleaned up real good. But there's not a lot of residue. So just running a regular uh, radiator flush type stuff should uh, clean a lot of this out too. But we'll clean as much as we can while I've got it apart. And I mean, he's looking at probably another... $7,000 if we have to pull the block out and send it in to get it cleaned and if we can get it most of the way clean and then run some flushes through it later uh, I think that's worth saving the money But a lot of people on the internet will be like, oh, you got to take the block out and send it in and have it clean You don't have to and if you're not the one paying the bill if you have $7,000 extra you want to just waste on it Yeah, in a perfect world it could be done Just very light wear. It's honestly one of the best main bearings I've ever taken off a 92 series. I'm, I'm shocked by that. Obviously it needs to be replaced, but considering it had all that water going through it. Okay, we started cleaning everything in here all just caked with grease and dirt. We still got a lot to go, but we can't, we got to have everything clean really well when the, when the heads go back on. Um, so there's, I don't know, six to eight hours worth of cleaning probably before everything gets done on here. We're going to clean out everything. So the owner is going to do a full rebuild on this. So we're going to be pulling we were going to pull all the liners anyways, replace the O-rings uh, that go between the, it's a wet liner, so the O-rings between the coolant passages uh, and the air box. Um, so the labor cost really isn't any different than putting new kits in it, just that the parts cost is. We were automatically replacing the one hole, no matter what, because it had the water and the rusty piston and it's got some gouges and stuff. Uh, but it's going to be a full rebuild, so all new pistons, rings, liners, uh, we were going to automatically do the bearings anyways as well. So main bearings, rod bearings, that was all going to get done. Uh, the cam looks good on it. We're not going to mess with any of that. So we're basically just doing a, a standard in-frame rebuild on this. Uh, but we're going to do some deep cleaning on those cooling passages. We're going to pull the water pump off of there still. And that's probably going to get replaced. Thermostats are getting replaced. All that stuff's going to be cleaned really well uh, and go from there. So yeah, it's, it's coming out really well. 
it's just a lot of, lot of nitty gritty little stuff that needs to get done here. Um, there's definitely a leak back here on this blower. There was so much, you couldn't even see those pipes and stuff like that back there. Um, so we're gonna replace that boot on there and then probably the O-ring uh, for the oil. Uh, you can't really see it, but there's, a, there's a, an O-ring on the other side of that little thing there. Uh, so we'll replace that so that it stops that oil leak that he had there. Um, but everything's looking good and progressing well. Okay, so the piston rings look really good. One of them's stuck. That one right there is stuck. It should have, see how the gap is really small? It should be big like that right now. That means there's carbon around it or rust. This is the rusty piston. It's also, they're not very gapped very well because here's a gap, there's a gap, and there's a gap. So they're all really close together. There's an excessive amount of oil here on the side of this piston. You can see how shiny it is. So there might be a problem with the oil control ring down here. Um, or perhaps that wrist pin cap was leaking because there's oil up around it. There's a lot of buildup there between the two rings. That was from that rust, probably. I'm not sure if I don't know if you can see it. There we go. Yeah, you shouldn't see that carbon there like that. Um, overall, the piston didn't look too bad though, but if it wasn't rusty at the top, it's a good, good candidate to reuse, it looks like. But we're not, we're replacing them all. But yeah, that, that ring is seized right there. Oh yeah, it is. So no sooner do we get this shelter up and then we have two major wind storms that are crazy. And now we're gonna be testing it for snow load as we're looking at getting three to five inches of snow uh, in a couple of days. Squeeze monkey, don't you know? It's that bus, squeeze monkey, don't you know? It's that bus, squeeze monkey, don't you know? From a mile away, you can hear them play as they climb that hill with ease. At the top of that mountain, there's a new life waiting for those who can make the run. If they can make it to the top, Scott will put them in the shop till their new life has begun. Buses come to run Bus Grease Mountain We're gonna get that big job done 